uh, just out by the car park of the prison. Um, I thought this morning I'd just have a quick look around. I've got in early, so seven o'clock. Um, so I'm just gonna have a quick flick round and show you through the prison, show you what they've done to dress. Um, I shouldn't really do it, um, but I think it's quite exciting, so, so I want to show you. But this is the car park. You see there's a couple of uh, vans there. I'm sure there's a trailer there for, for Mr. Goodwin, seeing as he's a star, catering bus and lorries and stuff. And catering's turning up today, which we're very excited about. So um, yeah, let's get inside and I'll show you what's going on in the wings. So we're just heading to reception. We'll take a quick wander through. The film company's going to be here in about 20 minutes, so I'm going to be quite quick. Um, just whip round through reception and through A-Wing, um, and I'll show you what, what's what. So, they've been dressing for a couple of days. There's a nice camera here. Look at this. Lovely. Reception time. It's going to slow the flow. Um, let's head through. It's just all prepping, ready for dressing, really. It's also normally this time in the morning. Let me see the ghosts. So yeah, there's a lot of uh, lot of stuff. The honey wagon, the artist green room, production office, unit base, reception area set, main set A wing. I can't show you the other stuff because it's all okay. So we're coming onto the A wing. I'll put the lights on because you can't really see a lot in the dark. I've been doing this for two years and just flipped on the wrong bloody light switches. What a twat. Right. <clears throat> well, the lights are on. Let's have a quick look. Uganda. So you can see there's a lot of stuff still to be dressed. We've got a lot to do today. Um, these walls here, new floors down, these walls, these are fake walls, they're plastic walls they've put on because it's a flat surface like here, that's wood, um, it's a flat, flat surface, they've put these on, they look really cool when you press them, they do in a little bit, but they look really cool. Um, let's be further down, server is on its way to be dressed. Again, still a fair bit to be done in here, but it's dressed. I personally scrubbed that floor the other day myself. These locks are really cool. We're gonna try and get hold of a couple of these locks because they actually lock um, into cells. So we're gonna see if we can get hold of a couple of those. Table tennis, anyone? Look at this, nostalgia. N64, PS1s, joysticks. Um, I'll take you down very quickly. Oop. And of course, what prison would be a prison without bikini clad women, underwear women, naked women. Keep flicking through, see what else we got here. Um, so, <coughs> lots of board games yeah, to visit. So this is gonna be used for our essays. I say our essays, they're not mine. Um, so this will be the supporting artists. I'll tell you what I will show you, it's really cool. I'll show you the kitchen, because the kitchen they've used as storage. Um, so it's just filled with dollies, and just, it'll give you, hopefully if it's still filled, it'll give you an insight as to the comprehension, the size of this production. So we'll just whip. This is the scary haunted corridor I find. So I shall flip the lights on. Okay, so this is the storage room. So it'll give you an idea basically of the scale. This is just lighting rigs. Haunted corridor. Um, I call it the haunted corridor. It's one of the corridors I find personally that has a lot of paranormal feeling to it. And this will be the um, <coughs> Believe it or not, another green room, um, artist screen room. So this is the main actors, um, and obviously they've got the trailers outside. So if you're ever coming to film in a prison, um, don't be thinking that you're going to get Hollywood quality green rooms. Uh, so Holby have dressed everything. Um, they've put everything in, and they've put real locks back on the door that actually lock. So you can see, I can press the door way to open and we've got our very own prisoner say hello prisoner let me out come on you bastards <laughs> uh, 27 years you did this how's it where you live fella yeah how's it feel to be on the other side i know where you live <laughs> I, know. I know where you live unusual to see with your clothes on chrissy <laughs> <laughs> cheeky <laughs> what, what would a, what would a prisoner say graham uh, excuse me miss 
Any chance you got a bit of burn? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like. I love you. I love you. I wouldn't be so bad if this didn't work. <gasps> <laughs> they were like, hey, John, yeah, the he's actually locked in. Yeah, we haven't set the door yet. Yeah. But I'm gonna. They, they've they've um, hired these. Uh, no, they bought these, and they're gonna sell them back to production companies. So I'm gonna ask them if I can buy one or two. Yeah. Because I thought we'll stick it on set eight, and then we've literally got a real cell we can use. Um, but these two cells. I'm really tempted to switch Sally out and do 29 yeah. and 30 yeah. because they're really clean, they're really neat and they're real ready like that. And this one's already got our bunk bed in it. We just need to put a bunk bed in here. And then we've got two cells made up as real cells and then music behind bars, we could, well, we'll probably have to lock them off potentially for music behind mm. bars. Um, yeah. This, uh, yeah, this would have been a fall the way one, but that's Keeper academic. Stop. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Uh, so Graham's just come in this morning for filming. Um, he's uh, both acting and advising in the role um, with with uh, with the production company. Unfortunately, he fell over this morning um, uh, coming out of his house and he's properly fucked up his shoulder. He basically looked like well, he looked like a really bad zombie um, when he when he arrived and he was really white. So we've had to. Um, uh, paramedics have seen him and basically we've had to bundle him into a car and send him down to A&E so Keith has taken him down so I came in this morning to be to get extra work done because I'm coming at 6.30 I get loads of work done <clears throat> before half nine um, before the day sort of begins um, first thing the world wakes up and starts pulling me away all over the place um, and I found myself now in charge of the site overseeing the productions and such like that they're pretty self-contained so it's not too bad um, I've had breakfast, which is good. So I've had breakfast. I'm sat in Chrissy's office, which is even better. I really it was difficult because because we're filming everything ourselves. I ideally would have. Um, it wasn't my first thought; it was an afterthought. That I was like all the drama that just happened with Graham because it was kind of like everybody bundling and like it was quite an important role today. It's a really important day for the film company today. So Graham's a massive important piece, and everyone's kind of piling in, making sure he's okay, and paramedics and all. It was, you know, so, so I got interrupted there by a phone call from the location manager because they they need to replace what we need to sort out Graham. Um, <clears throat> it was an afterthought that it would have been good to kind of film it because you would have got to see the drama that kind of goes on behind the scenes. Obviously, it was an afterthought because my main concern was about Graham's health and making sure he was okay. And actually, then I realised that we couldn't film it anyway because it's got all the crew bouncing around and 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 we're not allowed to film that sort of stuff, which is why unfortunately we're not seeing a lot of the production, but. Um, I'll see, I'll, I'll see what we can do in the next couple of days so we can get some shots in 